Joining us now from Sydney is journalist Ray Martin. Ray, thanks for joining us on a tough day because you are good mates with him. George had been dealing with dementia for years, but when were you able to last catch up with him and what can you tell us about that? Yeah, I saw Hi Joe. I saw him in the um, uh, middle stages of the dementia and took him out to lunch. For the first 10 minutes, it was the old George, um, full of fun and full of opinions. Uh, and then uh, this horrible disease uh, took effect. Um, I'm sure he wouldn't want us to be sad on a day like this. If you've had a, a celebrated, really successful life as George did, almost unmatched, um, he'd want us to celebrate that as well. Um, he was an extraordinary character, an extraordinary journo, and I guess what you saw on television is what he was. There was nothing fake about George. George was like that 24 hours a day. Now, a lot of Australians will be familiar in terms of your relationship with him through 60 Minutes, but had you had much to do with him or were aware with him before, aware of him before 60 Minutes? Yeah, I knew him before. I was the ABC correspondent in New York for 10 years and I came back on home leave once and George has just joined the ABC from newspapers. And he was larger than life then. I think probably uh, you couldn't miss George. Um, in an ABC party I went to, the first time I met him, I thought, wow, who's this character? Uh, and I think he was probably, along with maybe Bert Newton, I think he was probably the strongest personality on Australian television I ever saw. Um, he was, uh, he was uh, quite compelling, he was charismatic, he was loud, he was highly opinionated, he was the moustache and the, the jacket over the shoulder made him George Negus. But he was also a fantastic journalist and he, very ethical, um, loved telling stories, loved people. Uh, and as I said, you know, what you saw is what you got. That was George. Yeah. Now give us an insight into those early years on 60 Minutes. What was he like as a fellow journo in those early foundation years of what became such a huge program in Australia? He was, he was 60 Minutes, to be honest. I mean, there was, there was Ian Leslie and myself and George, but George was such a, a powerful figure on television that I think he, uh, he probably made the, the program as successful as it became. I had the chance to tell him that when he was still able to understand what, that I really meant it. He was um, a strong figure. I think the, the producers and the, and the camera crews and so on made it the program it became as well. But, but George was really important. The very fact that Paul Hogan could do his George Fungus character based on George <laughs> Negus uh, travelling was, was a, a tribute to him. And I must say that uh, today I've had more phone calls than I've ever had for anything I think in my life. And that's again a tribute to George because he was, um, he was such a star and such a, uh, such a good journalist as well. Mm. And what can you recall of seeing some of his early work as, as a fellow journalist on the program just starting out, seeing some of his work and what was your reaction to some of those classic interviews like that encounter with Margaret Thatcher? Yeah, uh, very few people would, would get away with a bashing uh, that Margaret Thatcher <laughs> gave George in that famous interview. Similarly, he did an interview with, uh, with Margaret Trudeau, who was Pierre Trudeau, the Canadian Prime Minister's wife, and very colourful, charismatic figure herself. And George knew a lot about uh, modern music, as much as anyone had ever met. And he made the mistake of talking to her about uh, Bridge Over Trouble Waters, Waters having been sung by the Beatles, so of course it was sung <laughs> by Simon and Garfunkel. And, uh, and she, made, she took the mickey out of him and uh, made a great uh, to do about the fact George had stuffed up on that particular one. Now, he did, and he laughed and he copped it as he could uh, and got away with it. I think you'd have to be a really powerful journalist to make those sorts of mistakes and get away with it. He didn't make too many mistakes. He was, he was accurate most of the time, but George's opinions uh, were also strong. You'd often have to, over a drink, you'd have to tell George to shut up for a moment, <laughs> and he'd laugh and uh, cop it. He'd laugh and cop it, and then he'd give you 15 more opinions. But, uh, but he, was, uh, he was a one-off. I mean, we we use the cliche about uh, people being one-off, but uh, he certainly was, uh, there was no one quite like George, and I think he was probably, um, you know, I, I think became uh, as famous as he was because he was, he was worthy of it. He was, uh, he was yeah. a very good journalist, very ethical, um, and a very good storyteller, but, uh, but even be a better bloke. Yeah, and he moves so easily between the media organisations. I think he virtually worked for everyone. Uh, it's a foreign correspondent through the 90s that we saw him introduce that first episode. Um, he was just so, so likeable and watchable, huh?
Yes, he was. And, and, and he, he loved the fact he worked for the ABC and had a high regard for the ABC. And Kerry O'Brien, one of his best mates as well. But, um, but he also was anxious to, to take that across to commercial television. And uh, because he was such a good communicator, he was bringing issues that were really important but also fairly complex uh, to people who hadn't seen them before. Um, and I think that he was, uh, he was able to get some of those stories across and the ideas and the issues across in a way that very few journalists can do. And that's a, a great credit to who he was. And so what is the, the legacy he leaves? What, what's been his impact on TV journalism in Australia and particularly the, like the, the style and the delivery of news and journalism in Australia? I guess he was unique. Um, he personalised television or t- personalised news and current affairs, but not in a, an opinionated way. I mean, in person, he was highly opinionated and you'd have to try and tone him down. But on television, he would listen to other people, uh, despite the fact he'd savage prime ministers and politicians um, whom he uh, thought had done the wrong thing, not because he didn't agree with them, but because he thought that they'd made mistakes. And that was both parties, despite his affiliation with the Labor Party, with uh, Lionel Murphy. Uh, in those days. But I think, uh, you know, when it came to journalism, George, despite all the uh, criticism of people who didn't understand him and, and, and uh, disagreed with him, I think George was balanced. I think George did tell both sides of the story. He listened to people who had different opinions to his. He'd berate them and take them on. But nevertheless, he, uh, uh, in that sense, he wasn't out there as a propagandist, I don't think, ever. Um, I think he was a very good journalist. He, and he was certainly uh, uh, treasured the profession and treasured the fact that you had to be objective and that you had to be ethical. I think he was both.